Hey guys, I'm in the studio at the moment if it sounds a bit different and obviously there's less mess. Welcome to the channel and welcome if you're new here. I do a lot of repair work. I do a lot of rescuing of stuff going to landfill and I've done it again even though I didn't want to. Now, a few weeks ago, Kristen and I went to a garage sale. I wasn't overly keen. I don't need to buy anything. I've got a great farm cleanup happening. I've got to empty my emergency storage shed. I've got still got stuff stashed away from the huge workshop cleanup series I did a while back of motorbikes, other things I've got to process uh, and sell. So we went to this garage sale because Christine likes to go to them and I enjoy it, but she bought a couple of things. I bought something at every sale. There was a few sales and I'm gonna show you, most of it wasn't that exciting. There was some tools and china and stuff that I can flip from $5 into 20 pretty easily. I bought some lamps. Now, I didn't want them. They're standard lamps or floor lamps. They're probably 1950s, maybe 1940s. They're broken. They don't work. Uh, this one's actually missing its switch totally, and it's been glued. Obviously, they glued it together. Uh, this one has a broken collar, so you can't tighten it up. Uh, the cords are really dodgy. In fact, this cord uh, doesn't even poke through, so not sure what's going on there. But the lady said you can have the lamps for $5 the pair. Now, I was about to walk away and she said five the pair. They also came with these supports that hold the shades. And these, I've had to buy one of these once before and it was about $35. Uh, it might have included postage, but even so, I would have paid $5 just for those. They mount on the top of the lamps and they provide somewhere for these shades to sit, you can see these shades just have a, a large circle in there which sits on top of this. And that's kind of a diffuser and a lamp shade holder. Now, these are in good condition and they're hard to get in good condition because they go brittle and people put too high a wattage globes in there. So if you're running an incandescent globe of 100 watts, it gets too hot um, and it makes these go brittle and they basically break and fall apart. If you're running LED globes, that's not a problem. But uh, if you've got the old incandescent globes, make sure you don't go too high a wattage. The shade itself is worth at least $50, probably a fair bit more. It's a nice ballerina type shade in pretty good condition. A little dusty, but no bad staining. Uh, in fact, that's probably at least a $50 shade. I've seen these go for pretty good money on eBay. Uh, and the other shade is pretty cute too. It's very 50s in its colouring. It looks like an old English or a European scene. We have the aristocracy on their horses. Uh, yeah, that's quite nice. And that's not in bad condition either. The wire frame's a little bit rough, but you can see how that... sits nicely on the diffuser there. And that's how they go in the lamp. So. For $5 the pair, how could I refuse? But now I have to fix them both, so we'll take them out to the workshop, we'll fix them up, and I reckon we're make a, gonna make a pretty good profit on these, even including some parts and a bit of labor. Back in the workshop, we shall start with the three-legged one. The timber work is pretty good on this one. I mean, the, the finishes is quite worn in places, but I'm not gonna worry about that at all. And quite often the legs of these sort of things are very worn because they get knocked with mops and brooms and uh, they probably get a bit wet when people mop their floors or on the carpet it gets knocked by vacuums in more recent years uh, the actual main shaft of it isn't too bad it's quite a nice finish uh, a few marks around the top but generally it's sturdy it's solid the legs aren't wonky I'm not going to do anything with the timber except maybe wipe it over just with a little bit of furniture oil. It'll just hide some of the, the uh, pieces that look badly scuffed. So the cord, well, someone's put a different cord on this, which often happens with these things. Uh, a two-wire cord's fine, they don't run on earth, so that's okay. The plug here has the insulated sleeves on the pin, so it's quite a modern plug. Let's unwrap it though, it's certainly not the original wiring and as we can see underneath someone's done a particularly dodgy job of joining the wires. That's the original wire, it's a rubber type insulation which is quite dangerous now. 
and it looks like it's actually just about worn right through there uh, I don't know how they've joined it I'm curious to have a look so let's unwrap the tape now I wondered how much of a home handyman dodgy job this was whether they actually put a connector in or whether they soldered the wires or whether they just twitched them it's always interesting to see what people get up to at least they've got plenty of tape around it so oh yep yeah, okay that's not so bad they've used a, a connector block Oh, the wire's coming right out of the lamp now. That's okay, we'll pull it right down. Yeah, and you can see the... Oh, that's got glue on it. So they've glued the top. There's the wiring. So that'll just be going in our scrap bins. Uh, and I think the top was broken. They must have glued it. It happens a lot on lamps, particularly because the these floor lamps, because the shades are so big and the, the base that they stand on is... The, the footprint is quite narrow... So one decent gust of wind and the whole thing blows over. And of course the weakest point when it hits the ground is the uh, is the light fitting itself because that kind of connects the whole top with the frame. All right, so that's not such a bad job. Um, oh, the wiring's very close there though. That would have been close to shorting. But anyway, at least he used a connector and didn't just twitch the wires together. Doesn't really affect us because that wire isn't long enough. This wire is not safe, so I'm going to have to find another wire, another cord for it. Let's just take this wires out of the connector block because, as you all know, I save lots of hard wood to resell. And I do have a jar for these connector blocks. Okay, so there we go. We'll keep that. I'll probably keep that plug. I do keep the rewirable plugs with the sleeve on the pins. Uh, and I do resell them in the shop. And I'm not going to worry about pulling the boot off to unhook the wires. We'll just snip it off. And I get $2 each for those in the shop. So that's fine. If we don't need it, that's where it's going. So all this wire can go straight in our insulated wire scrap bin at about $4 something a kilo. I found a particularly long uh, two-wire lamp cord, which will be fine for the job. Remembering you need an extra long lamp cord for these because the wire has to go the full length of the lamp and then once it reaches the floor, usually it has to travel a bit of a distance to a power point. So sometimes I save cords out of vacuum cleaners because they're nice and long and they're good for this sort of job. Most of the lamp cords I keep have switches in them and we don't need a switch in this one because the light fitting at the top has a switch. Okay, now we've got our cord. We need to have a look at the top of this lamp. And if we've got a focus on here, we can see that it's actually been glued together. Uh, it's just the collar, so I don't have any of the fitting at all. And it looks like the timber has a little bit of a split down one side. If we have a closer look at the timber here, if we're not going out of focus, it does have a bit of a split down the side. And that can happen when they hit the ground hard. So we'll see if we can get this fitting out of the end of it. And uh, we might have to try and glue the timber work before we fit a, a new fitting in. Okay, I've got the end of the lamp precariously balanced on a pile of things, so if you hear a big crash, that will be it. Uh, it's been glued into the timber as well as the top's been glued, so I don't know if it's going to come out or not. Oh, not easily. We're going to probably have to break that, I think. Yeah, that's going to be very difficult to get out. I think we're going to have to smash it and just pull the bits out and see how we go. The baker lot's usually fairly brittle, so let's see if we can crack it. There we go. They go brittle as well with the heat. Okay, we'll try another hit on the end there. I might try and get my pliers onto that. I don't want to bruise the timber there. I mishit that a little bit. Uh, hopefully it screws onto like a, a brass insert. I'm not too sure. They're not normally. They normally have a a Bakelite threaded piece, which I would have thought would have broken off, but maybe the glue is just too strong. We'll get some pliers onto that next. Okay, I've had to swing this round so that the lamp can rest on the table. I was in danger of knocking things all around the shed. So let's see if these large pliers will move it. Okay, that has freed up. Maybe our hammering helped. Let's get my arm out of the road. Oh, beautiful. That's excellent. 
So it did have a brass insert in there. I don't think it was normal. Or maybe it is. So that's okay. That's good. We haven't... I don't think I have to worry about re-gluing the timber. It's actually pretty good. I'll just clean the old glue remnants off. I think that split's well and truly held by the glue. The brass fitting certainly seems to be solid. I'll find a new switch for it. Let's see if we can find a black one to suit what was there. And before we go any further, let's feed the wire through and poke it right at the other end. Hopefully it goes through fairly easily. It's much harder to feed it up through the, the collar for the fitting, so we'll get it up there first. Hmm, it's not coming through. Okay, plan B is to poke something down from this end and tape the wire to it. And I just found a big coil of uh, a big coil of brush cutter line here. So that will work perfectly fine. So there's a bit of a blockage at the bottom of that uh, brass fitting, possibly even some glue. So hopefully this will help pull the cord up. Okay, we got the cord through the end. It was a bit of a challenge getting it through here actually. I guess where all these timber pieces join, it's not exactly a smooth transition. So it's just a hole through the timber. It's not a uh, like a piece of conduit down the middle or anything. All right, we'll get some electrical tape around here. Tape it up as snugly as we can. And hopefully not have an edge that can catch. And of course we don't want to make it too bulky to fit through the hole. Okay, let's see if we can drag that through. Okay, going good so far. It's like trying to tentatively wind in a fish. So it's got pretty tight here. Ah, uh, pulled the, wire, the tape off, damn it. We're nearly there, but it went pretty tight, so it must be a bit of a restriction getting into the brass here. Okay, I can see the end of the tape. I wonder if we're going to have any success doing this. Oh, beautiful. There we go. Success. We've caught the fish. Okay, just one bucket of many of light fittings I've got. See if we can find one that looks pretty good actually. Switch works well. It's about the right era. Now it's got, yes, it's got an adapter in the bottom to hang from a ceiling, but it's got the threaded part which we need in that part. So that's the part that uh, is actually broken and that was the part that was missing. So this should do absolutely perfectly. Yep, looks in good condition. We'll just check this bit over the top of the lamp to make sure it's the right thread. Okay, we'll slide this up here. And yep. Beautiful. Now we can't put that on yet because we have to put the collar on behind it. In fact, we can actually screw that on now. So let's put the coral collar on. And we can now do this up properly. And we don't need to get pliers on it. You don't need it that tight but it needs to be firm, so that should be good. So now we just need to pair back our wires here, wire up our new light socket, and job's done on this lamp, that's great. Okay, I've paired back the other sheath far enough, and I've stripped the wire at the end long enough so that we can twitch it round, keep all the little fibers neat, and then fold it in half, crimp it with your thumbnail, fold it in half, and that gives plenty of copper for the terminals to hold and the screw to tighten on now i won't go to too much detail about wiring i have put videos on my channel before about wiring plugs and things and you do have to check with your local laws because they do vary around the world and even within australia they vary um, but in victoria it is perfectly legal to do your own wiring on portable appliances so you can't do wiring on anything fixed. You can't put a new power point in your house. But you can certainly put a new plug on an end of a cord or rewire a lamp. And it seems every time I do a video, even though I explain it very clearly, there's always someone in the comments that says, don't do this, it's illegal. You've, you're 
your insurance won't pay if your house burns down, all this sort of stuff. Well, if you can demonstrate competency and you know what you're doing, you do not have to be licensed in Victoria. So I'll await your comments. <laughs> all right, got to make sure all those little strands are in and can't get out and short on anything. We'll poke it in there. I think we need to back that screw out a little bit. Okay, that wires through safely now. Sorry if you can't see this very well because of my fingers. But I need to make sure it's wired correctly as you, I'm sure, can appreciate. So do the screws fairly firm but not overly tight because if you try and reef them up as tight as you can possibly do them, you're going to guillotine the wires and that won't be safe either. Now, they need to loop around under these little hooks and that provides strain relief although it's very unlikely to ever have a cord pull out of a light fitting in one of these standard lamps because you saw how hard it was to get the wire along through the shaft but that's a perfectly safe and um, securely wired lamp fitting now if you're like most people you've probably forgotten to put the collar on I think we all do that numerous times through our careers but uh, on camera of course I had to get it right so we can now feed that wire back down through and nestle our fitting into place there's a little locating notch then we can do up the bottom collar if you can see what I'm doing here and that should do up nice and firmly if the light is a little if the fitting's a little bit loose on that brass collar now's the time you can actually tweak it a bit more because we've got a, got a bit more to grab onto and there we go all done so we just got to uh, remove this top collar so that we can fit the uh, that diffuser cone on top of and uh, then put the collar back on to hold it and this lamp is finished we'll show you what it looks like at the end let's get on to the other one now this second lamp has a pretty good cord on it it appears to be okay i don't think it's the original cord and the plug is an older plug but it appears to be in pretty good condition so we might just check the connections on the, the plug because we can actually pull that one apart easy so we'll make sure it's safe but the cord looks okay the actual lamp is itself, the base anyway, is uh, better than the other one. It's got lots of knocks and bumps and bruises from years of being knocked around. But the finish is much better. It hasn't broken down as much. There's a few little bumps and things up the stem. But yeah, it's not too bad. So I think we'll just look at the top of this one and we will check the plug to make sure that's safe. The top has the original fitting and the bottom collar has cracked. And as we try and tighten it, you can see it's broken there. And as we try and tighten it, it just jumps the thread. So we can't get it tight enough. So that needs to come off. To get that off, we actually need to remove that bottom piece from the lamp body again. And whether that's been glued or whether that goes on a brass um, little threaded piece as well, I'm not sure. So we'll take the top out and we should be able to... Oh, there we go. It wasn't holding it at all. So the wiring looks good up there too, so we'll disconnect the wiring. I probably won't use... Oh, this is still an okay switch. Feels okay. But I did find another one in my box I had before, uh, which is suitable, and we do need the top collar. This switch is good as well, and it has a threaded section on the bottom, so we'll probably just completely replace that fitting. But first thing we do need to do is get this bottom collar out after I disconnect the wires. Okay, we'll pull plenty of wire through so it doesn't slip back. So we don't have to worry about re-threading the lamp as such. Uh, and this collar, because it's already broken, we should be able to just remove. Oh, the bottom section's actually got a chunk out of it as well. So that whole lot's broken. I wonder if it's going to unscrew. Oh, yeah. Well, it moved. I think it's unscrewing. Or is it just spinning in the lamp? It's gone tight anyway. Let's get this broken bit out of the road. Be easier to work on with this gone. Yep, 
it's gone brittle again. There we go. Now, it looks like this was unscrewing. It's just very tight. It might have glue on it as well. And it's not really getting much looser. I wonder why that's so tight. Better get out those big pliers. Oh, told you it's brittle. All right, well, it's undoing. I don't know why it's so tight on the thread. I think there's a fair chance that someone did put some glue in there. Hopefully the brass fitting stays in the lamp. No, I think it's actually screwing the brass completely out of the timber. So they've obviously glued the plastic part to the brass and that's not letting go. And now it's screwing the brass fitting right out of the timber, which is why it's so tight. But that's okay. I do have another brass fitting if we need one. But we may well be able to salvage this one yet. Well, that took some doing. And the brass isn't threaded into the timber. It's just pressed in. So it was extremely tight. Which is a good thing. You don't want it just falling out. I don't know if it was glued in there. I think it's just a, a press fit. So we do need to get this end plastic piece off here. I might as well take it off the cord. And perhaps we can just cut through this. Might have been easier to try and break it off whilst it was still in position. I think I might hit it on the anvil with a hammer and just smash it off. Oh, that was easy. So we should be able to reuse this. Where's our new fitting? Yep, that's going to be the right thread for that. And I think it did have some glue on it. It was certainly incredibly tight. And that's the, I think it's the right thread. Yep, that's going to go in nicely. So what I might do is press this back into the timber. I don't think we need any glue. I think it'll press in fine. All right, I won't press it right in. We'll be able to tap it in on top of the fitting. Obviously not on top of that collar. It'll just smash that. But once I wire the fitting up, and we screw it on there, I think just a piece of wood across the top and we should be able to just drive that down into the wood. So that's good. So there's nothing broken. The timber works good. All we have to do is uh, strip back the wire as we did with the other one and wire it up into this section. In fact, what I might do is I might screw that part onto the brass fitting and then we can just tap that down carefully no, actually, that might shatter. I think we're probably better off to get a piece of wood and just balance it each side of the brass and just tap it in uh, because, yeah, this stuff's going to be fairly brittle just purely because of its age. So same deal as our last lamp. Make sure you put the collar on first. Then we can screw the other piece down onto it. And hopefully it screws onto the thread nicely. Excellent, this is going to be an easier fix than I thought. Righto, let's trim up our wiring as we did with the last one and uh, connect it up to the fitting. Okay, I've just trimmed the wires back. We had plenty, we've got plenty of length, so we can start with some untwisted wire. We'll strip it back a fair length so that we can, so we can twist it nicely and then crease it over so it's nice and neat. Same with the other side. And as with our other lamp, we need to secure the wires under the little hooks. There we go. And we can assemble that now onto the lamp. Okay, let's make sure the plug's safe. Okay, I'm going to just rewire these because the wire looks a bit thin on the end there. Doesn't look like it's been twitched properly. That one's not so bad. This one looks a bit dodgy. Uh, doesn't have any strain relief on the end here. 
but these ones do have little raised pieces of plastic here that when you do them up it squashes down on top of the wire and that provides uh, strain relief on the terminal so it'll be okay nothing's damaged I'll just rewire these so that it's got some good wire and uh, it doesn't look so dodgy there I think it's just been twisted too much and it's gone a bit thin anyway we'll fix that up we'll put it back together and we'll give it a test okay just finished wiring that up it's nice and tight now I'm happy with the terminals the uh, strain relief isn't quite so critical on a plug because you can imagine if you pulled the wires out if it had an enormous force on the wires and pulled them off the plug the wires at least won't be live because the plugs into the power point whereas if the wires on the other end of a lamp or an appliance pull out they're going to be live so not quite so critical on the plug but they should still have protection so that's okay let's go and plug these lamps in and see how they look there we go guys how's that two things of beauty and then there's this lamp what do you reckon they come up pretty good hey so those shades look awesome i've just got led globes in there and uh, they really look nice and i'm not going to do anything with the bases actually whoever buys them can just rub a bit of furniture all over them but they're solid uh, they show a few bumps and bruises with their age i really like this shade actually it's pretty cool this one looks great and you can see from underneath the uh, diffusers work pretty well they just give a, a nice soft light through the shade they direct quite a lot out onto the roof which is kind of what you want for a, uh, a floor lamp in your living area. So there we go, a couple of really nice, probably circa 1940s, 1950s standard lamps or floor lamps from a garage sale for $5 the pair. And I think we've made a pretty good profit from our $5. So they have been safety tested and I'm going to put them in the shop at, I thought, $1.95 on this one. It is a little nicer and I think it would be yeah it's more of a classic antique lamp this one's more of a 1950s i quite like that shade and i'm sure some people are going to love it there will be people that don't but hey we're all different i'm going to price the the older one here at 195 dollars. i think i'll put 145 on that one so that's turned our five dollars and probably only really an hour's labor i mean it took a bit longer because i was filming into about 344 340 dollars return uh, that's an obscene profit but hey I'm a second hand dealer I've got to make my living somehow and it wouldn't have been unrealistic for someone to actually throw these out if the people hadn't have sold it at the garage sale there's a fair chance they would have thrown them in the skip so we've saved them I can make some money two things of beauty yes it wasn't me two things of beauty have survived thanks for watching guys we'll catch you in the next video bye for now